Welcome to Proven Improbable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us today is Greg Romain. He is the president, CEO, and director of Go West Gold, which is focused on becoming the newest gold producer in Timmins. Mr. Romain, welcome to the show, sir. It's a pleasure to be on the show. You know, we're honored to have you on our show today, sir. For someone new to the story, who is Go West Gold, and what is the thesis you're attempting to prove? Well, Go West Gold, Maurice, is a junior exploration company listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange on the venture of the exchange. We are focused on our North Timmins Gold project. And in that part of that North Timmins Gold project, we own 100% of the Bradshaw Gold deposit, which we are currently in a bulk sample and moving towards full production. The Bradshaw is turning out to be the and we hope to be the next newest gold mine in the Timmins camp, not next to an existing head frame built in the last 25 years. Mr. Romain, please provide us with some historical mining context on the Timmins region so we may have a better understanding on why Go West Gold has focused their efforts specifically in Timmins. Well, first of all, Maurice, I was born and raised in Timmins. And so, you know, I view Timmins as a great mining jurisdiction. In the last hundred years, there's been over 70 million ounces of gold that's been produced in the, in the camp. And, you know, there's a number of deposits that are currently being mined. For example, you've got Gold Corp uh, that are mining up in Timmins, as well as uh, Tahoe, their lakeshore uh, deposit, and a few other smaller ones um, uh, that are being mined by other various companies. So we, we, and it's really not just we, it's more my father-in-law who made the discovery. Uh, he was on discovery teams of other gold uh, uh, mines in the past. Uh, identified this this deposits which we're now hoping to bring into production. Gregory, now that we've covered the historical mining context on the Timmins region, please introduce us to your flagship project, Go West North Timmins Gold Project, and the value proposition it presents to prospective shareholders. The, the Bradshaw deposit is located uh, north of the city of Timmins and east of the Kid Creek Mine. The Kid Creek Mine is the deepest base metal mine in the world, which is owned by Glencore. Most of the mining companies in, in the Timmins camp are, are situated along the, what is known as the Porcupine Dester Fault. And we are located north on the Pipestone Fault. The Pipestone Fault is the same time period and event as the Porcupine Dester. When KID was discovered back in the 60s, uh, they flew air mag surveys and did some ground drilling looking for more base metals. They came across gold but couldn't follow it. It was in the early 2000s that the founder of GoWest got his hands on a government-led geophysics survey, pieced things together and came up with the initial half a million ounce resource in 2006. So it's a very prospective area that holds a lot of opportunity. Um, we, you know, we picked up a large land package along the Pipestone Fault. We now own approximately 25 kilometers along the Pipestone Fault and it still has, un has been underexplored. We, when, when I took over the company, the focus was to develop the Bradshaw into an operating, generate cash flow, and use that to continue the exploration. We have a number of other uh, zones uh, near Bradshaw that we've, we've done a little bit of drilling, have identified gold, um, and eventually want to turn that in, those into resources as well. So there's, there's great opportunity there. As well as, is, you know, we're... we're from the Bradshaw itself, the mine site is close to the city of Timmins, so there's good infrastructure, um, you, know, you know, great knowledge of the people, uh, you know, great working relationship with the First Nations because, you know, they've been working with mining companies for a long time. So all in all, uh, the Timmins area is, you know, one of the best areas in my view in, in, uh, in terms of uh, mining and, and opportunities that presents itself. Gregory, I believe you're being a little conservative here with us. Go West Gold has a multi-million ounce potential here. Talk to us a little bit more about the resource. So the resource is, uh, as I said, the total is about 1.2 million ounces. And if you break that down, you're looking at about uh, 450 to 500,000 ounces of uh, indicated ounces of, of about uh, six grams resource. In that, you've got a reserve of about 277,000 ounces at about a five gram grade uh, uh, fully diluted. And that, that resource is a 800 meter strike length down to about 500 meters. And then from 500 meters down to 800 meters, 
uh, you've got about 800,000 ounces of inferred, uh, inferred ounces at about six grams as well. It's an open along strike and it's open along depth. It's turned out to be one of the longest strikes uh, uh, ever found in the Timmins camp. Go West Gold has outlined a three-phase approach to growth on how it plans to optimize the North Timmins Gold Project. Please share the strategy with us. So the, the, the three phases are such, first of all, we're going to focus on the branch as I've talked about a little bit here. And, and what we're doing is we're, we're using existing capacity in the Timmins camp to process. And, and if I step back a moment, Bradshaw, the ore at Bradshaw is, uh, is our xenopyrite refractory gold. It's a similar, similar type of gold structure that is found at, you know, for example, at Barrick and Numa in Nevada. Uh, Placer Dome, Red Lake operation, part of their deposit is refractory in nature as well. So once we mill, we'll produce a concentrate and we'll ship that concentrate to third party for processing. So our, our, our view at the beginning was to get Bradshaw into production, use existing infrastructure and, and, and get the project up and running. At the same time, continue to expand the Bradshaw to get into multi-million ounce resource and then look at building our own infrastructure or acquiring infrastructure within the, within the camp. This way, uh, you know, we'll, we'll uh, realize additional savings and more, more to the bottom line. That's the first phase. The second phase is to continue the growth, as I mentioned, of Bradshaw, but also of the other zones that are nearby within a kilometer of Bradshaw. We've got the Sheridan zone, we've got the Rusain, Sheridan zones to the west, Hussein zones to the north, and we've got the Dow zone just to the south of Bradshaw. All of these zones have had some preliminary drilling done on it, but there's, they've never been turned into a resource. As you can appreciate, um, cash is hard to raise. We treat dollars like manhole covers, and, and, and again, we, we try to focus and do one thing right and then move from that, that center point. So the second phase would be to take Bradshaw in our PFS we talk about an average at when we're when we're in full production about 50,000 ounces a, a year, but we're we're already looking at plans to step that up to 100,000 ounces per year. In the PFS, we had one ramp, single ramp going into the it's called the center of the deposit. We now have plans where we're we're going to ramp off the main ramp and then get a number more faces uh, moving, moving so that way we can we can um, get a production up to 100,000 ounces per year. And at the same time, we've got the third phase is outside of the Bradshaw and the, and the zones that are within the kilometer. As I mentioned earlier, we've got 110 square kilometer land package. We've got a large land package on this underexplored area of the camp that uh, we've done quite a bit of geophysics work, soil sampling, that kind of work. And there's a lot of, a lot of correlations between what we see outside of, like, call it the Bradshaw project area uh, with Bradshaw. So uh, we're pretty excited about what we have and, and pretty keen on developing it. But again, our view is to grow it internally and, and move outwards as opposed to try to be the biggest and the best for everybody. We're going to do it one step at a time. Mr. Romain, walk us through the Bradshaw site. At the site itself, we've got offices, we've got changes, we've got, you know, we've got everything located. As a matter of fact, we've got about uh, 30,000 tons of mixed development ore on, sitting on site. Uh, we've, we've completed over 2,000 meters of, of uh, underground development. And, um, and, you know, our water treatment plant is up and running. So we really designed the plant, although we're just moving through the bulk sample phase and we've got permits for that, we're already in the... We're already well along the way of, of, of applying for our permits to continue mining. We've designed the mine footprint to really be set up for full mining production. So it isn't like we built a small little footprint just for a 30,000 ton bulk sample, and then we got to start all over again. We've been doing things in parallel, which is how I've always run, run businesses. Let's discuss the bulk sample program and moving towards production. Go West has accomplished some milestones this year on the Bradshaw project. What can you share with us regarding the underground development? So far this year, we've um, we've completed over 2,000 meters of underground development. This includes commissioning of the main ramp and a portal, 
you know, the portal is sufficient and the ramp is sufficient to, to bring us into future, you know, full production mining. We've developed uh, three levels so far, the 30, 40, and, and uh, sorry, 30, 45, and 60 meter levels. And uh, we've initiated silling, and we really we're right at the stopes now. So we've got about 30,000 tons of mixed adulment ore on surface, um, and then we're ready to start mining. The development follows the goal structures, and you know, all the work that we've done to date shows great continuity and, and great opportunities. Um, we've also, you know, it's one thing to be an explorer on surface drilling holes, but once you're underground, you really get to see it, and you know, you really, we've been able to confirm and enhance, you know, our, our, our geological model and, and what we see. We believe there's a, you know, there's a lot more structures uh, uh, that we'll be able to uh, prove out. And, uh, you know, so far on the project, you know, the most important thing, there's been no injuries at the project to date, and, you know, it's, uh, and everything has gone really well on the underground construction. What steps have you taken this year on preparing for production? Well, to, 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 in preparing for production, we've got the water treatment plant, which was fully operational, and the discharge is environmentally compliant. And that, that's a big step. Uh, we also, we've introduced uh, ore sorting and uh, x-ray ore sorting and laser sorting. And really what, what this is going to do is it's going to take the, you know, our, call it our reserve grade of about just under five grams per ton, we're going to reject plus 50% of the waste rock, effectively doubling the grade of the ore up to 10 grams that will be delivered to the mill. So as you can appreciate, um, while we're still chasing the vein and minimizing dilution uh, at the mining phase, it allows us to reject the waste before it hits the mill. So there's a big cost savings because, you know, we're going to be shipping this ore to third party for processing. So we're going to be able to ship less and also our cost will be less in the mill because we're not going to be processing the waste material. So that is, that is very important. Um, you know, we continue to, uh, you know, do uh, metallurgical test work and so far our tests have shown that we get 97% recoveries and we continue to optimize the processing costs on the flotation circuit. You know, the, 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 one of the biggest things in underground uh, mine operation is ground stability, and we've been able to demonstrate stable and competent ground conditions in, in both the ore and waste areas, and that's very, very important. We've, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna be able to revise our geological model sharply to expand the mineralized area potential. So. As I said a minute ago, we're underground and we see lots of opportunities to, to expand the mineralization envelopes as we, as we move forward. In terms of the concentrate, we're going to produce a high-grade concentrate ranging in, a, in a, between two and three ounces per ton. That, that concentrate will be shipped uh, to a third party. Currently, we have an agreement with uh, a company called Humon, which are a large uh, uh, smelting operation in China. We've, you know, we, uh, we went out on pricing to a number of different groups, both in, in the Americas, outside of the Americas, and, and that was the group that gave us the best deal at this point in time. And recently we signed a toll milling agreement with uh, QMX to use their Orbel mill uh, uh, to, to process the, the ore into a, to a high-grade gold concentrate. Regarding the processing and milling agreement, have you come across any challenges that were unforeseen? Well, the the with, on the process on the processing of the concentrate, it was uh, fairly straightforward. There was no no issues with the mill. We ran into a problem with the mill. We initially, and, and this is where where you know you know people out there may be looking at the go by share price and saying, well, what happened? And and really, this is what happened is. GoS signed a definitive agreement at the end of uh, at the end of uh, 2017 uh, with a company called uh, Northern Sun uh, to acquire 50% of the Redstone Mill in Timmins. And the Redstone Mill was a perfect mill for GoS. It had float cells. It could produce a concentrate. Uh, we we signed a definitive agreement, working towards um, uh, getting government consent, Ontario government consent for the redstone to uh, process uh, third-party ore. We, in April of this year, we were notified by Northern Sun that their parent company out of China uh, had a reorg and decided that they wanted to terminate the ownership agreement, uh, the GoWest acquiring a 
And furthermore, they decided they didn't even want to process our order, period. Even though we we had uh, written permission from the government to, or they got received written permission, which we'd seen a copy of the, the, the copy from the Ministry of the Environment to process. So it really left us with a, with a hole, as you can imagine. Here we are sitting with, uh, you know, some, some mixed development material on the surface. Uh, we're, we're, we're at the scopes, and, and part of our funding uh, was precluded on us having this milling agreement. When that stopped, then the funding stopped, so everything, let's just call it, we hit a speed bump. So I ended up spending from, call it April, June, through to October negotiating to find a new mill, which I, which, which I ended up doing. So now we're in the throes of uh, back to financing, but but that was the that was the the, the major issue that that we faced in the in the in the milling side of, of, of things. What what you know for the for the person listening, you know our view was try to minimize capital spent to get the project up and running, but as you can you can imagine. You're saving on capital, but sometimes some things are outside of your control, and we end, unfortunately we ended up running into a bit of a, a bit of a jam. And when we signed the 50% definitive agreement, in the agreement it said that we couldn't solicit anybody else. So for a period of a number of months, I was working with the group that we signed the 50% uh, definitive agreement as, as such, and uh, was precluded from talking to anybody. But once it ended, then we moved on to uh, other other opportunities. So that that really impacted us uh, from a timeline and funding perspective. Walk us through the processing of the Bradshaw Gold Deposit. What we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're underground, we're going to mine, mine the ore from underground, bring it up. We are going to crush it at site. Uh, we're going to crush it down to about an inch, three quarters of an inch. And then from there we're going to run the material through the, uh, the laser x-ray sorter. And as I mentioned just a minute ago, that sorter will reject up to 50% of the waste rock. From there, the sorted gold ore will be trucked to the ore bell mill. And then from the ore bell mill, we'll produce a high grade concentrate of two to three ounces per ton. And then from there, it will be shipped from the port of Montreal to China. Uh, the, the, the agreement we have set up with the folks at the Human Smelter is we get paid 90% of the value of the shipment once it once it's on the boat in the port of Montreal, and then the balance will be um, uh, will be uh, remedied once it once it hits uh, China. What kind of time allowance has the company established on the evolution of the Bradshaw project? Well, we started. You know, we really started the project. You know, I joined the company in two thousand and eight, mid two thousand and eight. We really started, I say, the true work in um, in 2009, and the reason was was that the Bradshaw deposit was f owned 50% by a private company. So uh, I spent the better part of 2008 and the beginning of 2009 uh, pulling uh, the private owners uh, half into Go S as well as the surrounding land. At the end of 2009, we raised approximately six million dollars. So, you know, the true work started in 2010. Uh, currently, uh, we are, we expect to have the bulk sample completed towards the end of mid-2019, subject to financing, and then be in the commercial production at the beginning of 2020. As well as some of the, some of the catalysts, not only growing the Bradshaw, but we also want to start spending some money, uh, uh, you know, some time and effort on the, the Sheridan and the Roussain zone uh, to get that into resource status as well and add to our ounces. We've covered phase one. Let's move on to phase two, which is doubling your production rate to 100,000 per year. Go West Gold has three additional gold zones. Please provide us with some background on each of these zones. Sure. The, the, the first zone is the Sheridan zone. It's located approximately one kilometer east of the Bradshaw. We've drilled uh, several holes back in 2013. Um, the Sheridan zone was owned by a private company called New Texmont. Uh, the owner at the time, who's, who's since passed, indicated that they had, they, had, uh, they had pulled out a couple thousand ounces of gold there. I, I can't prove or disprove that, but what we did do is we drilled a few holes in 2013 and we got some pretty good grades, you know, um, grades that we've reported, you know, any, anywhere between six 
six to five grams over four, to, you know, anywhere between one and a half and four meters. Um, so there were some good grades, and, and it was all shallow drilling, like, you know, less than a couple hundred meters. So that's one area we want to go back because that's about less than a kilometer from Bradshaw. And we think, you know, if I step back a moment, the current resource is about eight, 900 meter strike length, but we've drilled, uh, you know, 1.3 kilometers on that strike length. And we've done some big step outs that's not included in the current resource. And as well at, at depth at Bradshaw, we've drilled, you know, 1200 meters and still found, found mineralization. So the Rusain, or the, Bra or the Sheridan zone is the one that, you know, we'll, we'll target first. And then if, you, if we move just north of Bradshaw, you've got the Rusain zone. It's an old American barrack property that we picked up from Gold Corp um, several years ago. Um, we, we, we drilled a few holes up there as well and, you know, hit four to five grams. Uh, one hole was four grams over 13 meters. So, again, only a couple holes. Uh, again, shallow drilling. But, you know, we see that there's opportunities up there as well to, to hit that area. Um, and then south of us, we've got the Dow zone, and there was some historical drilling, again, in the, around the three to four gram range. Again, very shallow drilling, um, less than 200 meters. Again, the Bradshaw, you know, we drilled this year underground at Bradshaw. We drilled some of our largest, some of our biggest grades uh, underground, uh, you know, um, and we think that that's going to provide us with a great opportunity to enhance uh, the value. Like, we intersected, and it's all public, gold values of the project, like 150 grams of gold in a new zone outside the current resource. We've also identified a number of new gold zones in the bulk sample area um, that, that we found once we were underground. And also, we've gone through some of the uh, historical uh, core, and because uh, you know we're using the x-ray sorter, we also own a handheld x-ray gun and the handheld X-ray gun uh, picks out the arsenic, and the and and the gold is pretty predominantly associated with the arsenic. And when you get high level of arsenic plus 10,000 parts per million, you're looking into three to five gram per ton. So what we did is we spent a little bit of time over the summer uh, going through some of the old core, and we found core outside of our resource that that contained gold that really had never been analyzed. Again. Our gold is fully disseminated. It's not easy to see by the naked eye. And uh, and again, things we've learned now being underground has, has changed the way we view it, which is not really uncommon once you go underground and uh, has, has afforded us an opportunity that we think we'll be able to add ounces to uh, to Bradshaw itself and, and help us grow towards the 100,000 ounce mark. Moving on to phase three, talk to us about blue sky exploration and potential. As I mentioned earlier in our, in our interview, we've got about uh, 110 square kilometers of land located on the Pipestone Fault. We've got about 25 kilometers uh, of, of property on the Pipestone Fault itself, which, which we are seeing, and in, 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 you know, not only Go West, but there's people that are outside Go West that have come by to look at it, think that we're just sitting on the tip of the iceberg, and that it, it really lends itself to uh, much greater potential. As I said uh, earlier in the presentation, we've done um, quite a bit of geophysics IP surveys, uh, uh, soil testing, and we find a lot of interest in, and we've used the Bradshaw kind of as, as the as the marker, and we've done a lot of test work on Bradshaw, and now we're testing all the other sites, and we're finding a lot of things light up and are, are similar to what we found on Bradshaw as, 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 the, as the marker, so to speak. So we're pretty excited about the opportunities. Again, um, you know, more work has to be done, but I think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of interesting targets and opportunities that present itself to grow outside of that, call it the, the Bradshaw area that I talked about, the Roussain zone and the, the Sheridan zone. I think as you move away, there's going to be a lot more opportunities. And, you know, if I can mention, just south of Bradshaw, you have the the previous Sandgold had a had a had a company called SGX, which was their exploration company up in Timmins, and there's a resource just south of south of Bradshaw that is very near to us. Um, that deposit is 50 meters of overburden, and they and they've recognized in the past that the only way they'll get to it is through Bradshaw, and we happen Bradshaw just happens that there's a large outcrop, and it's the only outcrop of that size in, in the area, and it's really flat, 
uh, bog type situation. And uh, so there's, you know, and, and on the Pipestone Fault, if you follow it further east, you've got a number of other deposits down at that end of it, which, you know, Kirkland Lake uh, has, uh, has the Taylor Mine and um, uh, there's the old Black Fox Mine, et cetera. So there, there's lots of opportunities on the Pipestone Fault, just that where we are, there's lots of overburden and was uh, just, uh, it was people's last thoughts, but uh, obviously it's not our last thought. It's, uh, it's front and center for us. Talk to us about CSR. What type of relationship does Go West Gold have with the community? Go West, as I mentioned at the, at the top, uh, I was born and raised in Timmins. I still have family in Timmins, uh, lots of family in Timmins. So we, and I have a very good relationship with, with the city of Timmins. I have a very good relationship with the uh, uh, First Nation groups. Uh, you know, I've worked with them for the last eight, nine years very closely. They've been very... They've been very forthcoming and very proactive and very supportive of what we're doing. Everywhere from the city of Timmins uh, through the through the mining school, we've you know we've hired students in the summertime, um, and you know even even you know uh, there's been a, there's a new mayor who's just taken over. Uh, there was an election recently, but even the past mayor was a mining friendly mayor and and uh, always had great support from the city and and all, all the community. Greg, as things come to fruition here. Talk to us about the community and how many people will be gainfully employed here. Well, we expect once once the mine gets up and running to the what's called the fifty thousand ounce per year, you know, phase one approach. You know, you're going to be looking at you know probably seventy to eighty people being employed, possibly a few more. Um, and that does that's just up in the Timmins area. There'll be a few more probably at corporate, uh, but. Um, um, you know, if, if, if we can get a mill built in Timmins, then you're looking at another, you know, 20 to 30 people as well. So all told, you're probably looking at 100 people getting being employed up, up, in, the, up in the area, which is significant for the town. I, I can tell you when, when I'm back in Timmins and people bump into me, they're, they're rooting for us because they all know about the big players and the big guys. But it's, as I said to you, it's, it's been 25 years since anything's been developed from a greenfield. And, uh, and we've got lots of supporters and, and people want to see this happen so uh, it, it keeps me excited to know that uh, the community is behind it. Before we discuss the management team are there any reversionary interests or royalties on the North Timmins Gold Project? The only the only there are a few small royalties on the North Timmins Gold Project but on Bradshaw itself on their 100% on Bradshaw there's only a 1% royalty currently with Sandstorm. Are there any redundant assets such as patent mining claims? No, no, there isn't. Sir, we've covered a lot of ground. Let's conduct a brief recap for the audience. You know, Go West has enough ground to host multiple mines. You know, we are targeting a near mine expiration with, you know, in striking, and we're in striking distance of building the next new gold mine in Timmins. Uh, the Bradshaw deposit has all the earmarks of, of the historical mines in Timmins. And we have a large, large land position and it's situated in a, in a world-class mining camp with great infrastructure. Switching gears, I learned from some of the most serially successful in the industry from Rick Rule, Doug Casey, Giant Bandari, Mickey Fulp, and Bob Moriarty that the people running the business are equally, if not more important than the latent material in the ground. Mr. Romain, please introduce us to your board of directors and management team and the unique skill sets they bring to Go West Gold. Well, we have a, when I took over Go West, uh, the, the board at the time had been there a long time and they said, Greg, you know, do what you want with the board, change the way you see fit. And what I've always tried to do when, I, when I've run a company is get people on the board that I'm not looking for people just to agree with me all the time. I look for people to challenge me and I look for people with different skill sets. And, and fortunately, I've been able to, to do that here. Uh, a few names, uh, Fraser Ellett, the chairman, He's been involved in a lot of different financings and understands the business uh, quite well. John Frostiak, uh, John retired from Barrick, but he was involved in building the autoclaves for Placer Dome up at Red Lake. Uh, very well known, uh, very technically sound uh, individual. Uh, Larry Phillips, he was the co-founder of I Am Gold, which you know most, most people out there will know I Am Gold. Uh, we also have uh, 
uh, Yun Gang Wu, he's one of the representatives, because one of our shareholders is out of China, and they own a 23% of GoWes, and Yun Gang was the fellow that introduced me to the folks in China, but he's also a geologist, and he QP'd several, uh, several uh, uh, com- uh, resources up in the Timmins camp, including Tamex, which uh, currently is owned by Lakeshore, uh, or owned by Tahoe Lakeshore uh, Operations. Um, as well as, you know, I've got some of the, some really great mining people and 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 technical people. And uh, Greg Hart was underground mine manager for uh, the uh, uh, operations for uh, Gold Corp up in the Porcupine Camp in Timmins. Uh, Garth's worked on a number of projects. Uh, mechan- uh, he's a metallurgical engineer, very sound. As well as uh, you know, Jeremy and. Um, who was involved with a number of uh, discoveries and uh, who heads up our uh, director of exploration. So we've got a really sound team that uh, are, you know, great skill set that uh, have been passionate and they've invested and uh, have been pushing this project forward with me. Tell us about Greg Romain. What makes him qualified for the task at hand? Well, I think I think in the, you know first of all, I don't like talking about myself because it's, in my view, it's not about me. It's about the people around me. It's the people that make it happen. I I, I equate myself as the I call it in hockey because I like ice hockey general manager or coach, right? And you, you bring the best people, you give them give them the tools and let them go. Um, I, I'm I'm the person who's uh, I persevere and I never give up. Um, a lot of people in my position would be easily give up trying to build a new mine from <laughs> Greenfield, and then, you know, as you know, there's very few that do it. And uh, I think that's, you know, that's what qualifies me. I, I ran, um, both Janet and I, who's the CFO, ran um, uh, Norcast, which was a manufacturer of consumable products for the me- uh, mining industry, and we were very successful at that, taking it public as an income trust and then selling it again. So. You know, we've been through it. We understand things, and uh, again, it's it's keeping people motivated and um, and surrounding yourself with the best people. Unfortunately, through my career, I've I've got to know a lot of great people, and they've all come back to uh, try and help push this project forward. Tell us about your capital structure. Yes, currently uh, we have about three hundred seventy million shares outstanding. Uh, we have uh, twenty seven million warrants outstanding. With the average price at about a quarter, the options about 12 million options at about 11 cents on average. Uh, fully diluted, we're about 410 million shares. Our, our you know, our largest shareholders out of uh, China, a private company called Fortune Future, they own approximately 23 percent. So, along with management that owns about 11 percent and other insiders, uh, you know, including insiders, we're probably about 40. One percent of the company. Um, our trading range, you know, we, we're up about 52 week high of 20 cents, and we're you know floating around the four, three and a half cent mark right now. So our market cap is hovering around a 15 million dollar mark. Again, you know, a big part of that is you know we when we 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 announced that uh, the definitive agreement was going to move aside, and we had to go and start over again on the processing side. So that that really impacted us. But I think. With the exception, with the exception of cash, which we're working on now, I, I think um, we have a great opportunity here at Go West. Let's discuss some numbers. How much cash or cash equivalents do you have? Uh, right now, we we don't have a lot of cash in the bank, and um, we're out uh, we're out uh, looking at ra- we're out doing a raise. We announced um, up to five million dollars plus uh, our our uh, our. Our largest shareholders are, are visiting next week as well. Plus, uh, you know, we're looking at strategic options uh, to, to, to move the project forward from a funding perspective. Talk to us about past cash flow distribution. So uh, the, cash, the cash that we've used, so we've taken on, uh, we've got about $8.6 million of debt. With, and, in, and in that, it includes $3 million of convertible at our discretion. Um, the money, the money that we got that we've been using has been all going into the ground. Has all been going into the development of Bradshaw. Um, we've spent approximately 
12 million dollars on Bradshaw we need another approximately 15 million Canadian dollars to to get us into full production is is what our financial models look at today uh, so you know beside you know everything goes into the Bradshaw that and that's that's been our focus and and, and it hasn't uh, hasn't moved from that what is your current burn rate so to answer that question, if, if, if we were operating without the, the glitch that we ran into, uh, our burn rate from a corporate G&A perspective is about, is about, uh, about $120,000 a month on average. I mean, some months are less than others. Um, that's from a corporate side. Uh, right now, while we're on, call it, uh, you know, care and maintenance, our burn rate's about $200,000 to $250,000 a, a month. Uh, again, as I mentioned, we're underground, um, so you know we're trying to sustain, keep things dewatered while we work our way through the financing piece. Now that we've got the mill to uh, to uh, to to mill the uh, the ore, are there any change of control fees? Uh, the only change of control fees are um, are uh, and the lending agreement uh, with uh, w with our lenders uh, that we owe five point six million US to. And then also the CEO and CFO have uh, employment contracts. Go West Gold conducted a pre-feasibility study. When was this completed and what gold price was used to determine the economics? The, the pre PFS was completed in uh, June 2015. Um, and it was, it, was, it was done at the gold price of $1,200 US and at an exchange rate of about a buck 30, I believe, buck 25. Or 80 cent, 80 cent exchange rate to be exact. On that PFS, the NPV was about 40 million uh, US. Uh, the initial capital was about 21 million. Sustaining capital was about 21 million. This is all US dollars. The average gold production in the PFS was 40,500. But I just want to caution everybody that includes the bulk sample and pre production. Once we get into the production years, uh, once we stabilize things, you're at 50,000 ounces per year. The life of mine operating costs was about US $821 per ounce, and the all-in sustaining costs was about $891 per ounce. So the IR was 27%, the life of mine was eight and a half years. Again, you know, this was 2015, we've been underground, we've done a lot of work since, we've, you know, uh, the folks that uh, provided us with some of the funding out of New York, um, you know, obviously we've done a lot more work that we just haven't gone out and republished a 43-101. But I can tell you that, the, you know, things are still looking positive for, from, from that aspect. All right, sir, you survived the storm. Mr. Romain, multi-layered question. What is the next unanswered question for Go West Gold? When should we expect results and what determines success? Results, you know, uh, pending financing, which we hope to, uh, you know, close on some financing within the, by the end of the year and then uh, uh, close the balance a bit early next year. Uh, we expect to have a bulk sample completed. Uh, we expect to start the bulk sample uh, towards the beginning of the second quarter. Uh, we should expect to have the bulk sample done about six months after that. Uh, at the same time, you know, you know, we're hoping to, again, subject to financing, to do a little more infill drilling and then uh, short some of the zones. And then by the end of the year, uh, come out with a new updated resource along with um, um, uh, plans to get us into production, um, final plans. I mean, you know, we're going to we expect to have permits by then. So I think that'll be the success. You know, that'll be the success if, if by this time next year, you and I are speaking again and we can say we completed the bulk sample, here's all the great news, and uh, we're now headed into full production. That, that to me, will be success. What keeps management up at night that we don't know about? One of the biggest things that, you know, that, that you know, frustrates me is, as a CEO of a, of a publicly traded company is that, you know, you're, you can't always put out news releases uh, because sometimes you're working on things and that until it, until it's completed, you know, there's not much you can say, um, you know, for myself and, you know, the chairman and the CFO and, and a lot of the technical people, we're all shareholders in the company. You know, we've, we bought all along. I mean, last year, you know, I, 
you know, purchased stock at, you know, in the, in the, in the 20s. And, and uh, most, most recently, I bought stock at $0.08. Cents. So um, it's painful. But, but at the same time, we're going to put out news when, when it's justified and it makes sense. You know, what I, we are in a space that's a very difficult space and people are under a lot of pressure. And I, know, I understand that shareholders want to, hear, want to hear what's going on. They want to know, they want to know, they want to know. I think in our case, um, you know, I may be a, a conservative kind of guy, right? But, but, but I'm not going to just sell, I'm not just going to pump something for the sake of pumping it because I just think that is wrong. But, but I will tell the truth and I will give you the news when I know what the news is. So, you know, I mean, management would love to be out buying stock right now in the market, but at the same time, there's a lot of things we're working on that we've got to be careful that we're not offside as well, right? So it's a fine balance and it's one that keeps me up, the communication and how we can do a better job. And, uh, um, you know, hopefully uh, as, as we move forward, uh, you know, we'll continue to put out the releases in a timely manner that meet uh, expectations of all shareholders, but at the same time, it's information that's going to be meaningful to the, to the reader. I can't just put out information for the sake of putting out information. If you would, sir, you referenced a financing opportunity. Share the specifics with us. Yes, we're, uh, we announced uh, about a week or so ago that uh, uh, we're raising up to $5 million um, by way of a non-brokered private placement. Uh, it's going to, and it's cheap. It's at a nickel, and I think it's a great deal for people. Um, at a nickel with uh, a two-year warrant at seven cents, and these are all Canadian dollars for those listening. What question did I forget to ask? You haven't forgot much, Maurice. You've, uh, you know, you've covered just about all the bases, and uh, hopefully, I've been able to explain things clearly enough uh, to the listeners out there, and. Uh, Hopefully you get to come back uh, sometime soon to uh, give you an update, hopefully in a few months when uh, we get some feed into the mill. Greg, for someone listening that wants to get more information on Go West Gold, please share the website address. The website address is www.gowestgold.com. And as a reminder, Go West Gold trades on the TSXV symbol GWA and on the OTC G W S A F. For direct inquiries, please contact Greg Romain at 416-363-1210. That number again is 416-363-1210. He may also be reached at info at gowestgold.com. And last but not least, please visit our website, Proven and probable.com where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space you may reach us at contact at proven and probable.com greg romaine of go west gold thank you for joining us today on proven and probable thank you for joining us today on proven and probable remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com the information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.